Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of IM Debriefs. Today, we're going to be talking about sexuality and film as we review the movie Pillow Talk. Awesome. Uh, hello again. So we are so excited. Pillow Talk is um, one of my most favorite movies, uh, hence one of the reasons why I picked it for us to review this week. And uh, so one of the things before we go into like the specifics of reviewing it, it is um, some interesting things. I did some research on the movie uh, Pillow Talk in preparation for this. And I, this movie came out in theaters in 1959. Um, and it was interesting because when it was being released, the censors didn't want them to call the movie Pillow Talk because they felt like it was too racy. And, um, and so uh, this is interesting. I'm going to read uh, just, this is from uh, uh, Wikipedia. And it just says here, um, according to today, so Doris Day in her biography um, called Doris Day, Her Own Story, the film is titled Pillow Talk, but the title displeased the production code administration. Melcher tried to get producer Ross Hunter to change the name to Any Way the Wind Blows, which what on earth anyway the wind blows anyway it, it was the name of a song that he was about to publish but hunter stuck with the original name it says the original um uh what did it say here and it does say that they did actually change the name of the title for like a month before they put it back mm -hmm. and then they also had some other concerns with it because there were some scenes in it that they felt like were a little too sexual um, there's a bathtub scene in here. Um, and there's also um, in the basically the climax of the movie, he goes, he barges into her apartment and gets in, right in her bedroom, picks her up in her pajamas and walks her through the city. And everyone was just like, how is this even possible? Um, but interesting enough, it was the highest rated and um, earning movie of the year 1959 that it came out. And uh -huh. so anyway, so it's just kind of interesting to think, obviously we know sex sells and uh, there's there, they uh, have been using it as much as they possibly can. Even when you watch some of the older movies, you can see how they kind of allude to um, sexual things and like that to just kind of create that tension and stuff. And this movie, I feel like, is right on the cusp. 1959, I mean, the world was about to have some significant changes as it went into the 60s and um, into the 70s. And so um, what was what was some of your thoughts that you guys had in this movie as you, and, and just in film in general, as how sexuality is used, um, either depicted or used for sell or whatever, for money? Or storyline. Well, I'd say overall, like my first impression of the film was I thought it felt very modern. Um, like I know we did Rear Window and that's came that out was five 1954. years. 54, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, and I thought that, like, I don't know, I just watching it because um, I know Christy, like I, you know, asked her if she wanted to watch it, but I told her it was from 1959. And so you know, that's kind of a turn off. But I felt like as I was watching it, that it seemed like very, I could see how this could be like, is like a, um, I guess like a template for a lot of future rom-coms. Yeah. And I don't know, I haven't seen any rom-coms older than this, that this was building off of, but I could definitely sure. see the uh, plenty of modern rom-coms that I've seen. I could see, you know, commonalities in this film. Well, it was really interesting too, as uh, we've had conversations um, on this uh, on in IMD briefs before about, um, and I think Parker, you talked about it, about how um, 
what what did you call it that measurement of you can talk about like how females are represented in film and stuff and like how many lines they have and how many of the lines are focused on and so i as i've been watching this um other movies and this one i've kind of been keeping that in mind a little bit and what was interesting is there were some there were obviously some clearly um traditional i would say uh of representation of women but there were also some like she's really the main character of the film, mm-hmm. not not Rock Hudson, which I mm-hmm. think is was nice. I also think she's a professional. She like there was a lot of things about how she was being represented that I don't think is necessarily typical of how women were represented in the time. But mm-hmm. that being said, there were still plenty of things where she was um even the theme song pillow talk where it's like, there must be a pillow talking boy for me. Like it, it, it was still focused on, you know, love and how her true um, sense of happiness was, is finding that boy that she needed to marry or whatever. Jefferson, do you have any thoughts? Um, so far, not much. Um, I, I, I liked it. I agree with the points you guys are making. I think that it was, I appreciated a lot of the traditional values that were there. And I agree that there's, there are a lot of scenes that I was like, Hmm, wow. I'm surprised that that's in this film. I did not expect it. And I kind of Parker and I had that little half episode um, last week after we had postponed this episode. And he had kind of mentioned how it was different. It was very different from what he had expected. Mm -hmm. And so I was kind of expecting it. Um, And it was different. Um, having like seen it in the background, I, I didn't pay attention to this film at all, but I know that I've seen you watch it before. It's definitely not what I thought it was going to be. So tell me, dive into that a little bit more. What did you expect it to be? And then, and both of you, actually, I'll ask this question to both of you. What did you expect it to be? And then how was it different? And was it different in a good way or a bad way? Yeah, I thought it was, for me at least, I I mean, I remember the title. I know that you'd seen, I, I know that you liked Doris Day. So I think I've seen quite a, a few of those. In my head, <laughs> this is what I thought. I thought that it was Doris Day and she was married to the Rock Hudson and it was just them, kind of a boring movie. I, I thought it would be very boring. I thought it was just going to be them living life, you know, and having pillow talk every once in a while. (laughs) (laughs) So I thought it was going to be pretty boring. And I I, I definitely did not expect, I mean, she wasn't married at all, you know, until the very, very end, you know, when you do the three months fast forward. And yeah. And that was almost like what could have been a post credit scene in our modern world, you know, three months later, you know, And it will end perfectly because it was so fast. Like it was really just three months later, punchline, end. Like that was it. Um, Mm -hmm. So I I liked it. I thought it was a lot better. I I was more invested than I originally thought Pillow Talk would be. Okay, cool. How about you, Parker? I guess I, I expected it to be more like, I don't know, traditional... 1950s i didn't expect it to be as progressive as i felt it was um Mm. and i guess i didn't expect it to be as funny as it was so i wasn't really thinking going into it it's going to be a rom-com i was thinking it was more going to be a rom yeah just (laughs) just like not not, like a yeah just a rom um but like you know straight away i i don't know if it's just doris day just has like a really um strong character and she's a good actress like she just straight away you can tell like she's like very i don't know it's like you could tell that the lead was like a woman and she had like a very powerful feel to her and her character as well because she was like a businesswoman she was like in a position um like it wasn't they didn't just i don't know i guess i thought maybe it was going to be more following older gender roles but she was already like successful businesswoman although they i still feel like they kind of i felt like it was there was like a juxtaposition between the two because at the same point like she was like a businesswoman but then they were like kind of implying that once she got married she would settle down and be a homemaker 
That's what I kind of yeah. Even though we didn't see that. Yeah. yeah, that wasn't blatant, but I could see how maybe. And you never mm-hmm. really get to see that. Right. Um, because, you know, the whole movie is taking, is really just up to the point where they um, mm-hmm. uh, just decide that they fall in love, basically. Mm-hmm. And so you get the three months later, and then that's your little punchline. But well, yeah, and- you don't really get to see. But you could see how, I could see how the next, the follow-up, Pillow Talk 2 would be something like that. Mm-hmm. Well, and even skipping kind of to the ending, like they kind of built her character to be, you know, someone who doesn't take less than they feel like they deserve. Um, and, you know, she was, you know, picky with the people that she was dating. Um, mm-hmm. But then, like they didn't make, it wasn't that she wasn't dating and then all of a sudden she was convinced to date. It was that she was picky with who she was dating. But then she flipped a switch just by the pure fact of him saying that he was going to marry her, I guess that like, when, where did you, so when you say flip the switch, what switch yeah. are you talking about? Okay, like so when after she falls he, in love, when no, she first realizes like, right. this is someone I want to pursue or what? Well, so she or falls no. in love with Rex, his fake she, persona, which is yes the antithesis of his true persona, basically. Then when she finds or, out, well, but I'll go ahead. Then when she finds out um, that it's Brad, she gets upset. She is able to get her revenge by, you know, messing up his apartment. And then she's still angry at him. He carries her to his apartment. And all he says is he doesn't even ask her to marry her or anything. He just says, I was thinking about making you my bride. And all of a sudden then she goes from yeah. angry to be like, <gasps> My bride, and then that's how it yeah, ends. Yeah, and yeah, she's yeah. just like, "Hey, it loves it, and we're gonna get married." For sure, for sure. Yeah, I I agree with that. Um, I do. The reason why I was gonna say "or" earlier is like "or," um, his um, the Brad persona that we get to know was really not who he was. He wasn't, mm-hmm. you know, he wasn't right into well, that I part. Wish they had showed. Because they did, like, I guess his transformation was it was from the guilt afterwards, you know, whereas I, I, I think in films that are more similar to this, um, usually they you can see the character start to change before mm-hmm. they get caught out, which in this, we didn't see anything like that. It well, like I would say still... you see a little bit. And, and, and where you see that is, is, with, is um, it, with his interaction with Jonathan. Whenever, mm-hmm. whenever Jonathan talks about her, because he's obviously love is, you know, he's fallen in love with her as well. So it's a little triangle where he's all of a sudden like, I, that's where for me, I felt like that's when he really knew he loved her was like when there was a competition and, and it wasn't just to win, but he's like, wait, wait, I'm going to pursue her. Well, that so that's from my perspective. I know. So the only time I can like where I can remember the conversation specifically is when he he's not even interested he's never seen her interested in pursuing her until he basically does it out of that competition or whatever he he feels like she's desirable all of a sudden when he finds out that jonathan's pursuing her and then after that is there any like specifics that can help jog my memory of a conversation he has um the one time that i really feel like it was when it was in his i I can't remember the specifics but this is i remember the moment where i thought this was when he it was about maybe three quarters of the way into the film so it was quite a far away in there but he goes and meets him at the uh, at his office at jonathan's office and and they have a conversation there but i can't remember the specifics so i guess that's I, I don't have anything to support it. But when was he? When did his redemption story take place? Or what do you? Well, well, any hints at his redemption before he was caught? Yeah, I definitely think is when he was caught is when it when it, when it gets big. I, there's two cots. He's caught by Jonathan, and he's caught by Doris, and and. Uh, but him being Speaking of that, this Jonathan is... doesn't doesn't change anything really. Well, because in what he does. No, it doesn't. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's an interesting thing. I'll have to watch that again to find out where I felt like that that moment was. But yeah, you're right. Um, what else was I going to say? That 
what something you said made me think of something that was going to be off topic. So I held it, but now I'll never remember it again. <laughs> um, might- oh, I love, I love how she figures out that he's lying was mm-hmm. with the song, like, I, mm-hmm. and how she finds the music. And she's like, because another thing that Doris Day has worked into her movie, she was, um, really popular for um, singing as well. If we go back to our artists, um, actress, the actors that sing and singers that act. Um, but so they worked in some music in, in this film and they actually worked in quite a bit. And I, I enjoyed those elements and I like how they set that up and the fact that he's a songwriter. And I thought that was kind of interesting, but when he, did you guys, when he is walking out of the apartment to get the firewood, and the music, he sees the music on the table. Did you guys see that as, or did that give away that too much, the foreshadowing and how he hides it yes. in his coat? Because yeah. I'm like, for me too, I thought, why why did they have to do it? They just showed mm-hmm. us how she's going to find out. I wish he had just walked past the music. Like, yeah. Um, and she they just found it that down way. To like a dumb audience. They did that a lot. I think especially with um, like the, they voice over their thoughts. And I thought sometimes it was okay, but sometimes it was like, I could totally tell that from their facial expression. You didn't need to add the thoughts of them thinking, what? When their face is like, "Mm," you know, it's like, okay. Well, well, in the first time it happens, it almost catches you off guard because you're like, wait a minute, what, why do we need to hear her thoughts, you know? Mm -hmm. And then they do use it several times throughout. Sometimes it was fun. Like I liked it when they were in the car and it was like him thinking and she thinking you get to see like what they're thinking sure. but sometimes it didn't i thought it was just like kind of another way to dumb down to an audience sort of yeah do you think it would have been weird to only use it in that scene like they had to start using it throughout so they could use it in that scene so it didn't all of a sudden come out of nowhere right yeah i still think i think they used it enough that they could have cut some of it mm-hmm. uh, okay jefferson Jeff? What are some of your thoughts and we've been talking most? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of specifics. I thought it was super funny. I mean, I do think they should have showed more of a d- redemption because he really was just a douchebag the entire time. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it was a very quick, like, oh, I, I realized that I love you. And it showed little bits and pieces. Like the, the, the scene that was really meaningful to me was when he was going through all the girls and calling them and saying, hey, like, I've met someone, I'm in love type thing, and then cross, crossing them off the lift list. The only thing I didn't like is that he said he was reading off a script. So it, did, it came off as less genuine to me because he was reading off a script instead of saying, like, hey, like, this name, I really am sorry. Like, I was a terrible person. Then it would have showed a little bit more of, Sure. Okay, I'm coming back. Rather than wow, I just hit a gold mine. Like I'm really into this girl. I'd like to keep her around. Um, I, I, I'm glad you brought that up, though. Even though your points are valid, that it was a script and stuff. Like they didn't have to put that in the movie. Like they could have just had him fall in love with her. And but the fact that they did that, I think, mm-hmm. is part of that redemption a little bit. Yes. So. Mm-hmm. that was my favorite part of that. You know, coming, cu- turning around and stuff like that. Also, you said this a while ago, though, um, Parker, but for me, it came off as she was being at the very end when Doris Days played the trick on her or a trick on him. And then he drags her all the way across New York City and takes her to the apartment. I, I interpreted that as she was being a little bit more playful. I didn't think that it was all of a sudden a switch flicked and she was like, oh, you want to marry me? I will forgive everything. Um, I still think it should have showed more. To show like, okay, like show me that that was his genuine personality. Like show me yeah. that, that 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 was the real him. And he's really, that that's who he is and he's worth this relationship. But I did think that she was more playful. Like as soon as he took her up and I liked that he took her up and said, okay, you're here, I'm leaving. I think that showed more to his character instead of, he could have done something else. Like we already saw someone throw themselves upon her, you know, Mm -hmm. seeing that he was this terrible person. I almost expected like, Oh, well, is he going to keep on pushing for it? But he was like, no, like here, have this apartment. Like I was really into this. I was even thinking about taking it further. I'm out of here. You know, like I'm leaving. And then she was, Well, I would have liked 
maybe I maybe there is something that that dad caught on to that I didn't. But maybe if they had added one scene where he's talking to Jonathan and they make it, you realize that the character that Brad is playing is more himself, but he he's sure. playing the Brad character as like sure. a defense mechanism or something. And if if yeah. that was conveyed, then it would yeah. have been more satisfying when they that. got together instead of where I was just like. Is this yeah. supposed to be satisfying or did he just dupe her again? You know? Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think there are some things that we see about, we learn about his personality in his trying to evade her too. Like there was like, how do I say this? Like the first time he goes up to visit John, first time, but one of the times he goes to finish, visit Jonathan in the office and she's in there and she sees him. So he ducks into the, you know, the obstetrician office and stuff, mm -hmm. but how, how you see him playing when he's not in front of anyone to me is showing some more of the true side of his personality. And like when he, um, anyway, I don't know. I, I, what I get he, what you're saying. Can you think of something he does? Valid. Well, it's just him. Like he is still mm -hmm. trying to uh, evade and stuff, but he's not putting. I don't know. I don't know. I can't think of anything. And and I'm probably um, just blinded, just... blinded <laughs> by my like of the film for years and years that I can't really see. I'd have to watch it again with that really in mind. But you're right, and I think Parker, I agree with you. They could have added a simple scene to help see um make that a little right. bit stronger and give his characters um uh, progress right evidence evidence and mm -hmm. right now it, we have to assume it and give him the benefit of the doubt rather than anything else mm -hmm. um i did want to talk a little bit about doris day and her acting style i mean one of the things i've always loved about her is she feels so comfortable and real it's almost like she's not acting I feel like there's always those scenes and I think it's just part of the um, the era where it's the starry eyed romance, you know, oh, and, you know, that's just kind of in it. But that's how I feel like most movies are in there. But she doesn't stay in those places. She comes and goes in those places. But she's super comfortable. And she just like there's another movie. So Doris Day and Rock Hudson, this is their first one they did together. And back in the day, I mean, they still do it this day, if you think about it. There's been a couple of, of actors where they've done several movies together because their chemistry was so good. Um, uh, but this did so well. So they did three movies totally. And all three of them had Rock Hudson, Doris Day, and Tony Randall in it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I would encourage you guys, if you're interested in watching the other two. Um, but anyway, if you watch the other movies, I mean, her style is so comfortable and she just loves it. There's one movie where she plays a mom and she has all these little kids and just how she interacts with them. She was just super comfortable. Um, and I just, I really, really enjoy her acting style and I wish she had continued acting. She, she only died a few years ago, really. I mean, she lived to be really old. And she was just kind of happy being her. She didn't have to, uh, which I, I think is great. Uh, she loved animals. And I know for a while she did some TV commercials and things like that for animal rights and things like that. But, and she was also a big supporter of Rock Hudson. As, as you probably know, Rock Hudson is gay. And he did, and maybe you don't know this, but he um, ended up dying of AIDS. And um, he was in the closet, of course, and playing this leading man. And uh, but she just loved him to the very end and was um, one of his best friends. And to that point about him being gay, there Rex, you know, they kind of alluded to Rex being gay, and they don't ever say the words. But like mm -hmm. when and and he did it himself because you know he would talk. He says, "Hello, this is Brad," you know. And then mm -hmm. he'd plant all these doubts in her and then he'd play or play with her even more. And then there's that point. He's like, well, he likes, I'm sure he's just going to get his mother's recipes and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And then she's like, and they never say the words, but she's, she's just trying to find out, well, are you really interested? And I thought that was kind of interesting knowing that he really was. And right. in though in that era, who knows, who knows who knew and who didn't know, you know? Mm -hmm. but I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah. 
no, I thought that was definitely interesting. Um, another thing, well, because you're talking about I, I, you, how you mentioned the when he does both play Rex and Brad on the phone, mm -hmm. and I thought that like that that was a really funny part. I thought there was a lot of funny parts throughout the whole thing. Oh, the um, loose part. <laughs> he played that so well, where he sneaks in the nickname for the lady. Uh -huh. Do you remember that? And then he waves to the lady, and she's like, "He's like, okay, I'm out of here." <laughs> he like, you stuck with Moose. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that was funny. And then I really like the the joke where he's like, um, where Jonathan's like, "I'm part of a minority group." <laughs> what group? What? Millionaires. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I love. I also feel like this is an interesting thing that was anti the current culture. He was throwing himself at her and money and giving her cars. And she just is like, I don't love you. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't love you. And I'm like, oh, because any other person or any other movie, they'd be like, oh, my gosh, I'm all about this. Because, you know, but she really. But that is funny. I miss that line, actually. <laughs> well, and I guess if you take like a. I don't know if I'm going to argue against my own argument. Um you could say that him like letting it slip or whatever that he was thinking about making her his bride could be like her under realizing that it wasn't fake and it was real, that he actually does love her. Mm -hmm. So, well, and in, in reality, even though Jonathan was really nice and sincere and stuff like that, he was a living example of really someone who's just marrying like, oh, I, I was in love with her until this. And then and he was the one who had had all these women he kind of mm -hmm. tossed aside. And now he was going for another one. And I didn't have any feeling like if he really did fall in, or, or really did convince her to marry that he loved her. Really? He was that she was just the next conquest of him mm -hmm. where I didn't ever really get that feeling out of the Brad character, even yeah. though he he never married anyone. He just was playing where Brad, I mean, where Jonathan really did marry people and was going through them. So, mm -hmm. what did you guys think about like the Tony rapey scene? That was insane. That one, that one caught me like pretty off guard because he just kept, mm -hmm. he was relentless. I was like, how many times mm -hmm. is he going to go for? Like, he would even pause and they'd continue a conversation for like two seconds and then he'd throw, he'd lunge at her again. Mm -hmm. And every single time, I'm like, dude like don't yeah and then what well, was really sad is she felt like she had to go and get a drink even after she said no i'm not going to and then all of a sudden she you see him at the bar and you know they're getting drinks and you're like holy cow so that part was pretty crazy that was unexpected to me and to how i mean she obviously was strong enough to push him off but she didn't end right. it like she just moved it let's go to the dance floor like i have to finish this out even though everything about it was totally inappropriate well i thought that that really illustrated that even her which i felt like they built up a very strong character um was like that was had such a impact on her like she was able to resist it and, and do things in her way to get out of the situation but it but wasn't leave it, it and help it, him be held accountable yeah. for it. But even someone that, like that was as strong as her. She, it took her a lot of effort to get out of it. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. That is. Uh, <laughs> um, when this movie was filmed, like uh, what is it about the way the color saturation saturation is in these movies from that era? Mm -hmm. that makes people like if you have blue eyes in this year when they use oh, yeah. cinescope or whatever it is it's like hold on to your horses because whenever yeah. you see their eyes i mean all of the colors are just so rich and everything yeah. about it i just don't know what they did with the film process right. at that time but it's not just this movie it's just very very common in movies at that well, it, time. Ha it has to ha yeah i have to do with the technical aspects that i i don't unless either of you know, I don't understand because it's the same with like when they colorize, I think when they take like a black and white and they turn it, it looks more like this than it would. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I almost feel like 
once they finally got out of black and white and they could make color films, they really, they just made all the colors just so, so rich because it's like, look what we can do. Look what we can do. And instead of, because it's so above and beyond the top that it's just not real life. Like nobody's eyes look like that ever. Yeah. Um, but I still kind of like it because it still adds to the, I don't know, romanciness of it or something like that kind of the dreamy look about it mm -hmm. but okay jefferson what are some of your thoughts i still feel like we're dominating the conversation no you're good um there are a couple parts that i i didn't like like the where the pianist in the club finds out that um he's playing her oh and then she sings and the song plays, sings you lie yeah you dog and i'm sitting there like I'm shocked that you didn't say something. Like, I think I would have said something. I think I would have been like, oh, excuse, like, I just barely heard him, you know, uh, revealing his plot, you know, like, don't do this. And they kind of, there were so many people in the film that kind of played along with this, you know, even when he's dragging Doris, you know, through New York City and they're just like, oh, yeah. hi, you know, like, or, mm -hmm. oh, I'll tell you when you're older. I was shocked. I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I did think, like, I kind of thought, like it was weird because she was definitely like the main character. Um, but the story did feel like kind of very driven by Rock Hudson's character, mm -hmm. oh, which yeah. was different because that's why I felt like the push and pull of where I was like, Oh, this feels very like modern, except for that, even though she's like the, the lead and she's not really driving the story. She's kind of at mercy of the men that's driving true. the story. So it was yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's really true. What other parts did you not like or that you liked? Mm, when his name's Jonathan, the friend, right? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. When he gets punched in the face. <laughs> oh, I thought that was funny. Well, his slap well, caught me on guard when he slaps her. Yeah. Oh, I thought totally. the slap was funny. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, that, holy crap. And then well, and, sudden, and when he set it up too, and he's like, "I hope you forgive me for this," or or whatever. Yeah. Like, so you knew yeah. he was going to do something, but then yeah. he just hauls off and slaps yeah. her. Yeah. And I was like, "What? I was not expecting that." Like, I actually, well, I kind of was expecting it because I have this like uh, perception of the times that I was like, "He's just going to slap her." But I kind of liked that the way that they did it was, I feel like he could have just slapped her. It seems like it was acceptable. But yeah. instead, he was like, yeah, at least, hey, I'm preface, slapping you preface. because I'm trying to help you. Yeah. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like he was a yeah. friend. Yeah. <laughs> and then the, and then keep on going, Jefferson, what you're saying. And then after he slaps her, the punch. Oh, yeah. Where the guys at the, you know, at the bar come over and just punch him in the face. Because, I mean, it's play, they played into it where she gets in and it, they make you think that he denied her, you know, and stuff like that. And, mm -hmm. and so I, I, I liked that part. I thought that part was pretty funny. Um, I was surprised how easily Jonathan was like, OK, I'm just over it. You know, like I talked to my my psych, my psychiatrist or whatever, and I'm, I'm yeah. over it. You know, it's not worth my time. Yeah. But see, that to me shows more about him like i feel like that was less of a surprise for me because of just his history with women sure. like he's just gonna go on to the next one because there's somebody else i can buy a car for and they mm -hmm. will mm -hmm. um because the only reason he was buying art from her really was to get him get her to marry him, you know sure. so and then the one part where when he goes into the obstetrician you know office and everyone's like taken aback and i thought it was so funny because i was just thinking like oh i would think he's absolutely crazy he's out of his mind and they're sitting there thinking that this is this rare specimen you know where this man can have the doctor's like he scolds the nurse you him, yeah you let her you let him go <laughs> this, this could be the 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 first thing ever you know yeah. Oh, and then it also made me think like how times have changed because nowadays, you know, someone walks in like that and they'd be like, okay, you know, like, here you go, you know, and wouldn't even think twice about it. So I thought that was one thing that, you know, showed the age of the show. So that, that part was really funny to me. I really liked that. And then how they called back to it, you know, at that end scene that where, end scene. you know, like we, we, we know, you know, like my wife's in labor or whatever, or what is it? My wife's pregnant? 
Well, no, he says, I'm having a baby I'm having or a baby. something. Yeah. He oh, says, okay. I, because they, it just confirms their suspicion that he thinks he's pregnant. Sure. Yeah. He's like, wait, I'm having a baby. And they're like, yeah, that was funny. I liked their use of split screen. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Now that is another thing I want to, because that's called out. Um, they said, uh, blah, 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 using the party line, which um, let me read what it says here. The film is notable for its usage of split screens during which Jan and Brad slash Rex have telephone conversations. Triple split, split screens are featured at the beginning of the film when Brad is playing, the, uh, is um, using the party line to flirt with um, Eileen and Yvette. Mm -hmm. and that it that was really clever usage i think it worked really well in the storyline and it and gave the um the movie right off the bat a very um i think energetic kind of feel to it because there was stuff constantly happening mm -hmm. and and i love how they actually worked a real thing that used to have party lines like use that as a plot device like Without that party line, nothing, none of this would have ever happened. So mm -hmm. I thought that was kind of clever. Yeah, I thought it really helped like the the telephone aspect of the film using the split screen. Mm -hmm. And then I thought they really, I think they, it seemed like they were really proud of the elevator. How they, <laughs> because they always like was focused on it. They were like made the screen and then they, you'd watch it the whole time. Yeah, they did it like three or four times but i thought it was yeah. cool it must, i was like i guess I, I just assumed oh that must have been like a pretty cool thing they did like you could tell they were proud of it because they're really showing it off yeah do you did you guys recognize the maid yes yeah rear window right yeah oh, yeah as she's the nurse I her, like i know you <laughs> yeah she's the nurse in rear window and i think her, that her that um actress um plays those roles she's a very she's a, a supporting actress and you mm -hmm. see now that you've seen her if you keep watching old movies from that time frame you'll see her again mm -hmm. she was really strong a good actress that they used a lot in some of those supporting roles um i thought that was kind of interesting um i also another... thought that the i liked the their like dating montage where it just had like an overlay of them like walking around and then it would show different not shots around. of yeah different places they were going i thought that was actually a really cool way of doing the like dating montage mm -hmm. and i thought i i paid attention to that as well because i thought you know what that is interesting it makes it makes you wonder because i think there's a lot of things that happen when films are being made that they improvise the directors are trying to figure out hey i need we need this to be conveyed to the audience how do we do this and we're we don't have any budget we obviously can't film on site and shut down the city or blah 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 like how can we do this and and I thought, yeah, that was a very interesting um, device that they used to show them. And all they had to do is change their dress and outfit and then have them walking around and show the different backgrounds. I thought that was interesting, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, a couple of things I was going to say. So this is when they were casting this film. This is what it says is the um, Rock Hudson was not known as a comedic actor at all he had just played in dramatic roles and it says the film is noted for reinventing the screen images of rock hudson and doris day and it said he had just finished a couple of uh, dramatic movies that actually had not done really well in the theaters and so he's like um got cast for this role and they were kind of thinking like are you sure this is the right person but when he told him he says look i don't want you to try to act funny at all i want you to just play it serious and that's and the and the comedy will come naturally, which I thought was kind of interesting. And then as far as Doris Day, it says here that Hunter, the director says, identified Day's potential to be sexy and recruited a designer who designed 18 to 24 costumes for her to wear. And he says, and she was, she's like, I'm not comfortable. And she says, he says, Hunter said today, you are sexy, Doris. And it's about time you dealt with it. If you allow me to get, whatever the designer to do your clothes i mean a really sensational wardrobe that will show off that wild fanny of yours and get some wonderful makeup on you and sh chic you up 
and get a great hairdo that lifts you, why every secretary and every housewife will say, look at that. Look what Doris has done to herself. Maybe I can do the same thing. And so he basically used this film to turn her into um, not just a sex symbol, but a classy sex symbol that like the men wanted and the women wanted, which is probably, but going back to our topic, sexuality in film, um, that's when when they're depicting this, they're they're really like they want women to be what like her and they want the men to want her type of a thing. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, so as I was like looking through, I don't know, I think I was searching up stuff be because of like how they showed that the. I don't know that the kind of homophobic scene or whatever, when they were kind of alluding to that. And so I didn't know before, like watching this, that Rock Hudson was gay. And so like I had, I discovered that through re researching this. And so then I think I was looking more and I read, and I don't know if you guys know anything about this, but um, I was reading that, like, I don't know if it was his agent or something, but there was like the, the, the person who invented, you know, the persona the, of Rock Hudson, because they were saying that they like, trained him like how to speak how to act as rock hudson right mm. to be an actor to get the films and stuff so i thought that that was really interesting because mm. it was talking about how his life um because like well i think he he died in 1985 and it was only like barely before that that he kind of spoke publicly about having yeah. aids or something and then he died right after yeah and he was i was really sick yeah, so it was like, but they said it was a important moment. I don't know that it was kind of changing the landscape for him to kind of come out in that way at the time. Yeah, it was big. I really remember it. I really remember it. And I think um, I paid attention to it more than people realized I was paying attention to it at the time. But I mean, I was in high school at, and when all of this happened and I, I loved Pillow Talk before that. I mean... I rented this movie on VHS and played it when we went to prom and we rented a big moving van and parked it in front of our house. And I got carpet from a carpet company and we lined the place with carpet. I brought in a, a big back in the day. I mean, all the TVs were in these big consoles and I brought that in there and a VCR and a lamp and I brought electrical cords and I just set up the back of this moving van and then all of our dates came and we went in the back which is so stupid. We could have just done it in the house, but we wanted to be fun. And this is the movie we watched. I mean, I loved Pillow Talk and I loved Rock Hudson. And then when he did this, it was really at the height of the AIDS. I mean, people were, it was, it was, there was a lot of um, anti um, gay talk. Um, it was a hard time. And, but at the same time, also people were starting to come out. So to have this A list actor. Um, to come out and say this and and then and have AIDS and then die shortly after it really did have an impact um, that I think uh, create opened the doors for a lot of other people uh, to come out so interesting yeah I didn't know you guys I well I didn't know you didn't know that Parker I didn't know if you know that either Jefferson about Rock Hudson yeah I didn't know that and Parker, you mentioned that scene. You, I think you called it a homophobic scene. Do you think it was homophobic? Um, because I don't, only because she was the love interest. So, of course, she's like, wait, you know, like, I would be sad. No, but they kind were. of allude to it in a bad way and in a negative way. And they just Which allude her, to it, it as would well. Have been, like, it's right? a taboo subject for them to even say, no, it's not a bad yeah. thing. It just would have been she was just misreading the situation and that it was a friend that was hanging out with her. Sure. Yeah. I think this is how I viewed it when I watched it, because I, I was like, okay. And I, and, and maybe, and if you didn't, did you know it Parker at the time you watched no. the movie or when you watched that scene, you just started or did just after the yeah. movie, you were just curious about rock Hudson more. No, after the movie, I, I wasn't curious about rock Hudson more. I was curious about the, like, the homophobia or whatever of that scene. Hmm. And in okay. researching That's that, I, That's when you realize about, about Rock Hudson. Yeah. 
I personally, this is how I view it. I do feel like it was homophobic, but I do feel like it was way less than it could have been or would have been Mm -hmm. otherwise. I think Mm -hmm. that because of Doris and Rock and their friendship, I think however it was depicted, they changed the tone of it a little bit. And so it was better than it would have been in any other situation, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. Because they could have done a lot worse. She didn't, the whole time, she, I don't think she felt like it changed how she treated him when she worried mm-hmm. about it. But it did, it was more about, um, uh, they were just kind of, I don't know. Do you see what I'm saying? I do think no, yeah. it was homophobic. I didn't get, but yeah. I think they did it in a way that they wouldn't have done had it not been the situation it was. With the right, real it could have been worse because I, like, I didn't get the impression that she would have... Uh, you know, like hated him or whatever. If she had found out yeah, that or was walked true. away. Right. Right. Yeah. So it made it like, okay. Uh, and and it'd gonna, be interesting to, to see. What, yeah. It would have been interesting to see the actual script to find out like, how was that scene originally mm-hmm. written? And then what conversations did they have about it? I don't know. It's just, I think it's hopeful that that's kind of what happened in me just because of who they were. Right. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I was going to tell you there was uh, so first of all, uh, another thing about this film is the script was written like in 1945. If you think about it, like 10 years before the film was actually made and it went, it was bought and sold and bought and sold several times before it finally got sold and made. And it was actually Doris Day's husband at the time who was the producer and ended up um, getting the movie made which is really great, but I, it makes me wonder how they viewed the script back in 1945 when it was really originally written. And if that's one of the reasons why this can't be made, it's just too sexual. And then how, what it went through and then how it must have changed. Um, and then the other thing that I thought was interesting that there was an unproduced sequel called Baby mm-hmm. Talk. Um, and this is what they say. It says a sequel starring Rock Hudson and Doris Day was announced in 1960. Um, so that was just a year after. And then it says, so then fast forward till 1980, which if you just remember, Rock Hudson died in 1985. Is that what it mm-hmm. was? But it says in 1980, a sequel was planned for the film set 20 years after the original film ended. The story involved Jan and Brad having their first daughter who would have been played by Christy McNichol, who was a famous actor, actress at the time and getting a divorce, which I'm like, why do you feel like, but basically it was just a redo of the movie. It says Jonathan would have been played by the same actor and then, then how they like fall in love again and get remarried. So it's right. just like, we got to give them, have them a divorce, divorce with the daughter. And it kind of almost found like it would be kind of like a parent trap type of a movie. It would have been. Um, but never happened. And I'm, I'm fine with that. I think the way it ended, um, but it just kind of goes to show you that when a movie does financial success, that yeah. um, people find ways to uh, monetize right. that success again, which is great. And that's why and it would have. That's Go probably ahead. why a lot of sequels aren't good is because they're not built from the creative side. They're built from the business side. Yeah. Yeah. And to be honest, if it had been made in 1960, I think it would have been way better than the 1980 version of it. Because in 1960, the film style and all of that would have been really close to it. In 1980, it would have been a completely different. It would have been felt so weird. I think I'm glad I'm glad it never really happened. So. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, I think it's time to rate to rate the movie. I always ask you, so Parker, uh, Christy, she did not watch it. You mentioned earlier, she did not watch it. Uh, Jefferson, did Lexi watch it? Yeah. Do, you, do you think, be, both of you, do you think, even though it's an older movie, do you think they would like it? I don't think Lexi would mind it. I don't think that she would love it either. Mainly for the fact that it's just an older movie, though. Um, I don't know if you noticed when I mentioned it when um, Lexi's mom was around and I said Pillow Talk, she said, oh, that's my favorite movie. So maybe Lexi has seen it in the background too when she was mm, growing maybe. up. Yeah. yeah, so that's fun. All right, 
Parker, what's your rating? I can't believe I haven't even, I didn't even think about it. Um, <laughs> I think it was really cool. So, so I guess, especially like as I was looking at stuff for this movie and like rewatching it, I was thinking like, it's so hard to watch these films. Cause obviously like we're viewing it through a modern lens and like, I kind of want to know like what it would be like to watch it when it came out. Because it's so, especially with these older ones, it's like we can't even really imagine it. Yeah, no, you know? it's uh, it's impossible to. Yeah. I mean, the closest is I I watched it when I was in high school. That's probably the first time I saw it. So it was yeah. in the mid eighties. But even then, so yeah, exactly. That was twenty yeah. years closer, you know. <laughs> yeah. So I and I I don't know. I so I think that I mean obviously it was well liked. It got a lot of money. And it was critically acclaimed as well. Huh? I'm not going to give it a two. No, definitely the floor for this one is a three. Um, I'll just say a three and I'll think about raising it. But All right. That's good. Jefferson? Uh, I thought Parker was giving us a preview. I thought he was going to give it a two. And for me, I did think about the entire time I was watching it, um, with, which the whole time, like 90% of the film, I was like, two, two, two. And then towards the end, I was like, ah, maybe it's a three. Um, but I I mean, it, it, I have to give it a score based on my perspective, which obviously does not have the, you know, it has that modern um, lens on it. So I'll give it a two. What does it two mean again? Four. What does two mean again? Look, it's not about what it means. It's about how it feels. What do you mean? It is what it means. No, it I, already, I don't know how many times I have to tell you that that was just a way for me to convey oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. my feelings to you. But you, yeah, Dad, true. you specifically take it way too. Like you're like, know, what exactly do. does that mean? I know. Well, I'm going to give it a four. Um, and I, I think the very fact that I picked this movie as one of the films shows that it, I, I think we have a flaw in our process simply because we each get to pick a movie. Now, Parker, I think you've done a better job at actually picking movies you haven't seen. For me, I have not done that. I have picked movies that I love. And so I think my movies are going to be artificially higher, not artificially higher, but my score will average higher because of that. I'm going to give it a solid four. I don't think I'll change that one ever like some of the other ones I have. Um, because I just feel like it holds up really well. Um, still, yeah. it's still enjoyable to watch it. Um, how many years old it is. And like Bennett, I told, I told Bennett when we were watching, I said, Bennett, you like rom-coms. I think you'll really like this movie. He wasn't really engaged at the first part and then ended up not finishing it because he got distracted. Um, but then today I was talking about it and he's like, stop, don't spoil oh, it. Oh. He goes, just because I haven't, I didn't finish, I want to finish watching it. And so I'm like, oh, okay. And so um, that, I think my, my score stands pretty good. And I love Doris Day movies. She's really, and she had a TV show too. She had yeah. the Doris Day show. And so that's kind of fun to watch that as well. One yeah, day honestly, I don't know. Watch. It's kind of, it sucks. Cause like, the, I feel like if there was a few changes to it, I could say like, oh yeah, it will stand up at any time like it's like permanently good movie by yeah. like i don't know like for me like there's just this stuff like with the gender roles because it was so i guess it makes it even more obvious when yeah. it's like uh you can really see it like juxtaposed because there is like yeah. a conflict there which yeah. makes it interesting but it's also like then it's more obvious too so it's hard sure to... well and i think just that very fact what you're saying is like um, you, a few more years after that, I think you would get what you want, but it still is a product of its era. And, and I just think recognizing that it was taking leaps and bounds above of what, mm -hmm. what the film was used to is, is, uh, is good. Mm -hmm. Somebody had to kind of start whittling away at it. And I think this is one of the ones that did it first. Yeah. It did say that it brought in a staggering domestic box office of 18,750,000. 
I mean, nowadays, if somebody brought, if they brought that in on opening weekend, it's a failure. <laughs> or what is it? Inflation? Like after yeah. inflation? Um, I don't know. I didn't look that up. Let's see I bet it's, it's a lot. I don't know if it'll show in here. Uh, Perhaps I'd have to. The production budget. The production budget's enough for me to say whether it was. Um, I would. I need to find that, like on IMDb. Google. Okay, I don't know if you're. My Google is down. What the heck? Oh, really? That's where. Sure it's down. No. It's like an act. It's actually like a Google problem because, like, I just got on another yeah, site and it's. Is it? Is it for you too? No, I mean I'm using Google Search, but and it's working. Yeah, mine's working. So it says the budget is 1.6 million. So 18 oh, million um, is the equivalent. 18 of million almost, 750. So it's all. So it's about two 200 million. Whoa. That's insane. For rom-com, that's really good. And on IMTV, it got a 7.4. Yeah. No, I, I, it, it, I think it's, it's a really good rom-com. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Awesome. All right. Well, um, whose turn is it next week? Jefferson? Mine. Um, yeah, so uh, we've got uh, I've got some big ones coming up. So I'm announcing bull because it's so big. Um, <laughs> so for the next week, in preparation for the restoration of the Snyderverse, we will be watching Zack Snyder's <laughs> Justice League. Which is way too late. Uh, that should have been the first one I picked, but I love this one. Um, this one's fantastic. Um, I was talking to Dad about it just a while ago, and I, I think that that I think that that announcement will be coming shortly. Um, WB has come out and they've talked about the you know they're going to be releasing a ten year plan, and you know with Ben Affleck not only showing up in the Flash. But Does Parker know what happened with Warner Brothers in this last week or so? I mean, I don't know, and that's why I'm trying to talk. Everything to you. I've always heard is that they're like, there's no plans to. Yeah, that, be, but they just had a change in ownership. Yeah, so Discovery, obviously, they bought WB, right? And then mm -hmm. they're slowly firing all the top people, and they've they've nicknamed the um, the previous universe after. Um, Zack Snyder was kind of kicked off, right? Um, the Hamadaverse, and he's going to be leaving. And they're, they've already announced that they're not doing Batgirl. And chances are they're not going to do that Supergirl. And um, the new ownership is really just looking at everything. And they're saying, hey, like, we're going to make a 10-year plan. So we're going to do it. It's very similar to the, how Marvel's done it, where it's like, these are all the movies we're going to do. And like I was saying, Ben Affleck is going to be in The Flash. He's was also just announced that he's going to show and show up in Aquaman two, um, so I have a hard time believing. I don't know. I just think that they're kind of hinting at it, and in a lot of their uh, like advertisements, like they they're just talking about how like the 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 Trinity right, Batman, Wonder Woman, and Superman are are vital to DC, and they're just like huge franchise makers and. Uh, so I think they're going to bring all of them back. And I think that they're going to treat the Zack Snyder versus canon as it should be. And I think that they'll move forward with it. And it will, we'll see to what extent that means. Uh, but I do think that they will make an announcement shortly uh, that they're at least going to respect it, um, if not completely restore it. So I'm going to get ahead of this announcement and we're going to do Zack Snyder's Justice League. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm going to wait. I have a comment after you announce your second week. Um, okay. But, you know, I think they should make a, it's like, a, I don't know what they called them, but you know how they do like the Flash and then they do like the multiverse crossovers? Yeah. Um, they should do kind one of like, like that. The but, Justice League type of thing versus yeah, the Flash like standalone that. movie. Mm -hmm. No, no, you're. I'm talking about the TV show. They do oh, it on like, yeah, yeah. They do those yeah. crossover episodes. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. So I think it'd be cool if they did Superman only, but it has like um, Tom Welling, Henry Cavill, because I don't know. I feel like all of each of the super mans, I guess, are really good at different things. Sure. Like, I don't like, and because basically this is my long way of saying that I don't really overall like Henry Cavill's Superman. Overall. Because uh, what I, I think I'd he's the best I'd... at is just the Superman role, which is like. You mean you don't like Henry Cavill as an actor? Is that what you're saying? Or you don't like him as maybe Superman? Maybe not. Like, I don't particularly like him. It's not like one of my actors that I like. I, I don't but think I, he's a fantastic actor. I, I, mm -hmm. I actually don't. But I think that, like, the thing that he's best at is, like, the Superman type. Like, if we're talking about, like, Christopher Reeve, and, you know, how he clearly kind of has, like, where he's Superman playing uh, Clark Kent, kind of. Mm hmm and then you have the opposite of that, I think, with uh, like Henry the Cavill. Smallville sort of thing, where it's like, oh, oh, you know, like Clark, you know, and he becomes Superman, but you really like get to know. He him. never ever really plays Superman. I guess that. he, right, right, right. Um, but then, like, I just feel like we never got to see Clark that much, and mm -hmm. so I didn't really like him. I think. I think that's yeah. the reason. Yeah, maybe it's just because I don't like his acting, but yeah, and it could be. I've heard that before. I, I've seen enough shows like cause I really liked him in. Uh, uh, what's the one that Fifty Three make? No, oh, the, well that was good. Yeah, Man from Uncle. Yeah, Man from Uncle. Mm -hmm. I thought he did great in Man from Uncle. Um, he, I don't know. I, I, I can see what you're saying, um, but I think. Like in Batman versus Superman, I think we do get to see um, some good Clark ver with him and Lois. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think that really was part of him trying to, it was a really good follow up. I, I don't like that they called Batman versus Superman because even though it really kind of was, but I felt like it was really Man of Steel 2 in a way um, because it was still Clark's story. Yeah. But I think you are able to get him still. That's really, really where he becomes Superman, I think. Um, because he's he's kind of, I don't know. Anyway, that's okay. No, I, I, well, it's what you were saying. First off, I do want to rephrase. I don't think he's the best actor. I don't think he's a bad actor either. Right. I, there are just some scenes where I see that I'm like, wow, that was that did yeah. not look believable. Like, I, I don't like that. I don't love how you deliver that line or something like that. But I actually disagree, and I agree more with that. I think that we saw a lot of Clark, and what I love about it is you've got Smallville, which had 10 years to develop Clark, right, because it's Superboy, right, before he's mm -hmm. Superman. And then you have uh, Christopher, Christopher Reeves, where it's he's Superman, and the Clark you see is just the mask he's putting on, right? Mm -hmm. He really is Superman, and you put he puts on this mask. And I think Henry Cavill's Superman is just that perfect blend where he's Clark. He's, he's, he's Clark and he's also Superman at the same time. And I love that you get to see him interact with his mother and you get to see him be a real reporter and he's not acting like this dork. And I know Christopher Reeves, they kind of say, Oh, he's, he's delivering good stories. He's a good reporter, but he's this, you know, complete humbling idiot. Like, right. Yeah. And in this one, you've got like Clark Kent, who's, you know, trying to take on the bat as Clark Kent and Superman. And, like, I, I love that you, you get to see both characters. Have you seen and Superman? And how they're and not that far. I actually have. I really like enough, A lot of it? Um, I need to watch more of it. I'm only I watching. think that... Yeah, I watched, like, I watched the first season, and yeah. I it was good. I, I did. I haven't watched the next season, and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed mm -hmm. it. It was different. He's a different Superman. Mm -hmm. I was like, Ooh, he's the, takes... he's what I think of as a perfect blend. Yes. No, and you I really like get to see it because he's like a father in it. Yeah. And he has to play both the role of like yeah. normal, but also I'm um, Superman. Yeah. You know who else? Because I get like Tyler's character, I think is he's more likable. Like he, he's the, 
I don't know, super, super likable, like enjoyable TV show, great character. I like that. Mm -hmm. Also, I think that this guy deserves a shout out too. Dean Kane. I, I thought his Superman was great. Mm -hmm. And I love that yeah. he got Steve Clark mm -hmm. and, and he really came off genuine. But mm -hmm. then you also have to think like those those people where Clark comes off too good, it, it kind of blends, how do, it closes that gap. Like Smallville did a great job at directly talking about it where Clark was too much himself that people started to figure out that he was the blur. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, wait, just quick. Is, unless, is there any other ones that you can think of other than Christopher Reeve, Dean Cain, um, Tom Welling, Tom Welling, Tyler Hoechlin, and, and Henry Cavill. I think Henry those Cavill. are probably that's a pretty inclusively on list. And Look, all, Henry. No, I just want everyone to quick rank them. So I'm going to say mine first. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay go well, for it. Okay, yeah, I'll say mine first. Oh, um, it's hard I to just, do the top. I know who. Okay, I'm going to start from the bottom. Henry Cavill. <laughs> I think, oh, bro. Come on. Who, Look, I have to admit, Henry Cavill worse than him. looks like you know, who Superman. He he has the looks for Superman. Right? I think. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, but that, that's not the most important part. And then probably I'd put Dean Kane, and then um, so here we now we have Tyler. Oh, yeah, oh it's Tom good. Welling. I forgot. So Tom Welling, and then Tyler Ho Hoechlin, and then Christopher Reeve. Wow. That's what I'd probably put. Holy cow. Well, mine won't yeah. look like that. First of all, I haven't, I watched, I have watched enough of Smallville to know, to recognize Tom Welling, but I just don't feel like he was Superman. He was Clark right. Kent. And so yeah. it's hard for me to put him but in the mix. But it was the story of him becoming Superman. Yeah. And I think Lois and Clark mm -hmm. is kind of the version of what that Superman would have been. Like, because right. it was a TV show, it was kind of the, Mm -hmm. So you can kind of and and Dean Kane did play in in Lois and Clark a couple episodes, didn't he? Smallville, yes, yeah, yeah in Smallville. Smallville. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. One, but anyway, yeah. I could I feel like that Dean Kane would be the version of Clark of Superman that that mm -hmm. Tom Welling and then Superman he would, would be have been. Tyler Hoechlin. Really, back. as the older Superman, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I he, need to he, watch he, more of him. But, you never think when you see Henry Cavill and the thing like that, oh, he grew up on a farm. Like he says like the lines and you're like. <laughs> Part of so, the things that, and you know what, this isn't Henry Cavill's doing, but I love the scenes when Clark is a boy with Kevin Costner, like, and, and right. that to me, I guess really endears like the, the Henry Cavill version because I'm like that, you know, so I don't know. That's hard for me to say. All right, I'll rank. Yeah. Um, I'll say, what's the name of the guy on the? Tyler. Okay, Oakland. I'll put Tyler as bottom. Just because I haven't watched enough, this is terrible for me. And so then I'll do. Whole season and you still put him at bottom. And then I'll do Tom Welling, Christopher Reeve. Who am I missing? You. And then this is Henry total. Cavill. What, where's Dean Kane then? Oh, he's Dean a tall. Kane. No. Yeah. Insert him in. In where? With underneath Christopher Reeve. Okay. So third. Okay. Well, Henry and I Cavill's want to ask, your top. What is this based off again? I don't know. Just I was of, doing it just off of how they favorite? like how they played the character of Superman. How they played the character of well, just like the character of Superman that they played. How I rank them in my favorite Superman. I'm gonna watch the other one more. Okay, if it's based off of that, this is tough because I haven't seen Lois and Clark in quite a while. Yeah, but. I, will... I think I have the first season on Apple TV, don't I? You probably, yeah. I thought you had some on DVD as well. I do. I have the first two seasons on DVD, only one season on Apple TV. Okay. Um, yeah, no, for me, I'm going to put, based off of who I think played it the best, I'm going to put 
Oh, this is terrible. I'm going to put Dean Kane at the bottom, not because I don't like him, but because I haven't seen it in quite a while. Mm-hmm. But That's kind of why I, I gave Tyler or whatever his name is. Sure. After I watch those, though, I can see him going up for sure. Next, I will say neck and neck between Tyler and Christopher. And then we'll go to okay. Tom Welling, Henry Cavill. Based off of so messed up. Based off the character, if you had said based off of acting, you know, I would have switched it. But I just thought of another one that I like better than Henry Cavill. Yeah, Brandon what's his Ruth. name? Yeah. What? Brandon. Oh, Brad, Ruth. Brandon from Brandon. that yeah. movie. Superman oh. Returns. I really There's don't like another Superman movie. better than Henry Cavill. So that makes him like the eighth best Superman. And What's I probably the like the movie? animated Superman better. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's you... what I was going to say. Animated Superman's solid though. What's his name again? Yeah. Is it always the same person? Tim Daly. He does oh, all of them. Is it? Tim Daly does, does it? Yeah, Tim Daly does. You know it. who Tim Daly is? He's... Yeah, I had to look up Wings because I knew. Yeah, that... he was in Wings. That's because awesome. they do switch his character around a bit, but he's he's the animated Superman that I know and love. Um, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I would rate him pretty high. But think about well, it. Like Henry Cavill, I, I thought he was the best. Besides Tom Welling, is, they're pretty much neck and neck because they really show the struggle of being a god of, among men. Right. No, the story, If that's that. to me, I, I attribute that to the story. So the story, mm-hmm. I like that. That like well, the so Parker, Man of you, Steel. I like Man of Steel. Sure. But when I think of the character of Superman, like who I want to, you know, f- fly and catch me. Henry Cavill. I want the real Superman. <laughs> so Superman. you're so funny. He's, have he's you so, like, seen? I have you seen Justice him. League Zack Snyder cut yet? Yeah. Parker? You did see it. Uh huh. Oh. I was going to hope that was going to change your opinion. Maybe it will because you got to watch it again now. All four hours. All right, Jeff. Announce your second one. And I'm glad we had this conversation today so you don't have to have it when we're actually reviewing the film. It'll probably come back yeah. up, though. I'm sure it will. Oh, it will. You <laughs> know what also lot. ruined it is the mustache scene. That was the original yeah. film. That's the movie. It's not in Zack Snyder's cut. There's no mustache. Well, I know. I'm just saying, but that ruined the character, you know? Oh, it's just, yeah. And they started out with it, and you're just like, that ruined the movie. Like, <laughs> that was the... the, no, the I, yeah. I, I question everything with that film. I really think that Joss Whedon was out Secretly to... Secretly trying to ruin film. it. Yeah, well, because... So one of the posts on Twitter was like, wow, like Justice League's supervillain Steppenwolf is way like underpowered. And he like liked the tweet or something or like chat, chatted out and said, yeah, he is. And it's like, what? Like that was, a, that, was a, that was a villain you created to be that way. If, as soon yeah. as you watch Zack Snyder's Justice League, completely different. Like mm-hmm. it made it so much better where like, uh, we'll, we'll talk about it. Yeah. You know what? I think what make... Oh man. Okay, just say the next one. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be a doozy. I think it'll we'll have a lot to talk about and it'll it'll be a long one. Um super excited for it. I the Four reason hours. I'm making the next pick is because I want you guys to prepare for it. Um yeah. and that is the uh, Lord of the Rings trilogy. Whoa. Uh-huh. So we've got okay, two so- of the greatest movies ever. <laughs> Well, so I here's my my it. comment that I wanted to say is because you're just you're saying basically that we're <laughs> going to watch like thirteen plus hours for your you're basically picking that's. I thought about it and I was like, there's I no just way Dad's going to do it. Number one, uh-huh. and then what do you mean? He just gave us that means we have four weeks to watch the trilogy. True. And these are enjoyable movies. The one I'm worried about is Dad. Like I, mm-hmm. like, have you seen the Lord of the Rings all the way through? Start yes, I have seen them. Mm-hmm. And you enjoyed them? Uh huh. I did. I liked them. Okay. Um, I, I like Lord of the Rings, and I'll say this, and this will be like the last thing I say about it. But I am not a fan of 
fantasy very much like the the wizards and the elves and that style is not something i particularly enjoy um and for the longest time i've seen bits and pieces of the pieces of these all the time growing up like i remember parker and bryce would always watch them when we went to um saint george as a family and never watched them all the way through they're just boring and i wasn't into that so like whatever and then Lexi would talk about them all the time. And I would tease her about liking, you know, this nerdy, you know, movie. And we actually sat down and we watched them all. And I remember, I remember just tearing up at the end, you know, the, of Return of the King. And I'm like, this is such a great trilogy. Mm-hmm. Arguably the best trilogy ever made. Um, and I cannot deny how fantastic and epic and just beautifully crafted these pieces of art were like, just because I don't like elves and wizards and stuff. So Mm -hmm. I've already started watching. I'm going to watch them twice um, by the next time I, my turn is, but. So you, you said you don't like magic and elves and stuff, but what about swords? Yeah. Swords. I'm okay with. Yeah. No, but not just okay with like swords are cool. Yeah, right? swords are very cool. I was thinking about that with this film. <laughs> Movies, guns are just not as fun. Like no. swords yeah. and lightsabers add just exactly. like exactly that's the element. yeah. That's why and I like I only like Star fire. Wars because of lightsabers, which is really just swords. Sure. So so cool. About the swords. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome! That's why. All I right, Zorro well, thanks too. for the heads up. And you know what? Technically, you should have. You have. To, if we're gonna do trilogies, I think we need to do this where we announce yeah. it in advance so that we have time to watch it. And I'll just mm-hmm. get the. I'll get Clark and Bennett and Mom involved, mm-hmm. and uh, we'll say we got to watch it by. And I think oh, we can pull I'll, it. I'll say that I. I say this. I have the same story. Basically, is I w- I wanted to watch Lord of the Rings, and I was like, you'll like it, um, and. I said, let's just watch like, uh, just watch 30 minutes. And then, you know, if you don't like it, then we don't have to. And we watched 30 minutes and we kept watching it and we finished the first one. And then she said, put the second one on. So we watched the second one right after. Are you serious? Yeah. And then I think we waited till like the next day for the third because it's a long time. But sure. it's everybody to, likes to watch them. two back to back. Well, you kind of have to with these movies, movies because this is why we have to well, do it as a do trilogy. And... It's because they just, They just end, but you know you're in the middle. Well, and what I was going to say is, yes, they end. Like, you know that there's more, right? But Mm -hmm. they don't end. Like, have you guys seen Insidious? No. That'll be next, next, next. I'm kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But that stops at at such a cliffhanger. You you have to watch the second one right afterwards. Like, it's just an insane cliffhanger. Mm -hmm. These ones I thought are so beautiful because they don't rush the plot. It's so they, he takes his time to tell this story. And at the end, you know that they're going to continue the story, but it was also satisfying. I mean, thank heavens I was not old enough that I, you know, was invested in the, these movies because leaving the theater, I'd be like, how long do I have to wait to the next one? Um, which thankfully, I don't think it was that long. I think they filmed them back to back, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think it was every year, but so are we watching the theatrical cut because there's extended. Oh, it's up to I, you, but you extended. Can watch the theatrical. I don't think that. Yeah. I, I don't think that the extent. It's not like a, you know, different. You know, you're not going to miss it up. anything. Look it up. It adds really? so much. To it. I promise. Look no, it up. I know it's going to add still, a lot of theatrical cuts time, better probably. For, to watch for you than do it. But I urge you, I recommend that you watch the um, extended cut. If the all theatrical of our release, say Parker, I can't believe you said that. If the theatrical release isn't good, I wish there was a way where you could watch like it's the extended, but it like shows you when it's extra, so then you can be like, oh yeah, that wasn't worth it. At the same time, instead of having to watch two in one, sure, yeah, because yeah. I don't believe that the. I, the theatrical have to be good enough. Oh, for sure. The, the, the theatrical is great. But the difference between this and, say, I watched um, Spider-Man 2.1. I was super excited for it. I love Spider-Man 2. I was excited for the scenes. And 
I've seen that movie so many times. I knew every scene that was added after. And it's like this long fight scene. And then like a couple that they, they extend a certain, like a couple of scenes, no real storyline. Like you don't miss anything. And the difference between that and Lord of the Rings is it does add, it adds, it adds details that make the story even better. So I, yeah. I think it enhances the story. It, it's worth it. But I'm guessing it's kind of like the, like the office super fan, you know, and, and like most extended or director's cuts where it's going to add things that you might like if you're a super fan, but it doesn't, they, they were things that were okay to take out because it doesn't, you don't lose anything important. Well, for, yeah. It's not going to be like Batman versus Superman where it takes out these pivotal plot points, but. Yeah. Yeah. I won't even watch the theatrical version of that one anymore because oh, it is sure. just a terrible movie. Same with Justice League. I will never watch that again. I made the mistake of preparing for Zack Snyder's Justice League by watching that one, and I've regretted it. Okay. That's good to know. All right. Well, the extended, if we do watch the extended, because they're really extended, aren't they? They are, but you have to remember that the, the, the credits at the end take about half an hour. So, uh, okay, that's good. It's to not know. as long as it you think it's going to be. But yeah, the extended, okay. I, like on HBO Max, I just barely watched it. It's like three hours and 40 minutes, three hours and 55 minutes. And then the next one is like four hours and 23 minutes. Wow. So basically three Justice Leagues in a row. Yeah. Wow. I am excited for Justice League, the Snyder Cut. I've been wanting to watch that again anyway, so this gives me an opportunity. And I do think if you need to break it up, you can break it up at each of the uh, the title cards. Each section has a title card, so you can take your breaks or watch one section a day or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. One of these days I'm going to be brave enough to do a TV show. I've already thought about ideas. The problem is, how can you do it? We're going to watch what do you mean? Lost. Jeff just, no, you couldn't do Lost, but if it's no. like a limited release or something, Jeff just set the, or, or you know, sometimes like one season is really good. Mm -hmm. So especially if, if everyone's already yeah, seen it Firefly, and rewatching it, or if there's only one, one season or something. Firefly. Firefly, that's short. I've never seen that and I'd be totally down. Um, which reminds me, the, the reason I wanted to watch these, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, um, is because the Rings of Power TV show on Amazon is going mm -hmm. to come out um, like the weekend before, right? Or was it the Thursday before? Right, yeah. My turn that we'll actually yeah. talk about it. So um, it's in preparation of that. I'm not looking forward to the TV series. I don't think it looks great, but I figured we'd celebrate by, you know, watching where it all started. Yeah. No, I like it. I'm excited. All right. Um, for those of you uh, who saw a special one minute, 38 second little clip that um, was released on IMDb uh, this last week, um, which I thought was the replacement episode for the one we skipped until I went in and realized that you guys did one where you reviewed. And so I did go and watch that. Good job, guys. It was good. Although if I had to rank the finale of each episode between the one Jefferson did and the one Parker did, sadly, I would have to give Jefferson two points, Parker one point. So you got to work on it. You were a little nervous. Just lean into it. I think you'll do it better. And then when we're all, when we get, I don't know, enough in, we can do a super cut of all the ends mm -hmm. and, uh, and we can, and see if we can match the energy in it. But um, it was good. Uh, and I was, I loved the little cut enough that I posted it on my social media accounts with my 12 followers or whatever. But um, I just thought it was so great. It was a good edit. It was funny. Um, I liked the scenes you put in there, like Buzz falling. And I just thought you did a good job. I really enjoyed that. We should do more of those little clips because um, those, um, I think we can eventually draw 
some if we do some nice edits of this stuff it may be more enjoyable than the long cuts but who knows it's easy for you to say because it took me like a while just to make oh i'm sure that's the thing is i don't think people realize how much work because you had to not only watch that episode a million times to pull out the right sections but then add the sound effects then add the clips from the movie and then like at the end when I started talking about the Tom Cruise, uh, the uh, Top Gun, and the mm-hmm. sound, you had to time the sound with the words that went up to it. I was very impressed. You did a good job. That was fun. I got enjoyment. I probably, I think it's been watched 44 or something times so far. And, and I'm probably 44 of them. <laughs> no, I know I'm not 44, but I've watched it a lot of times because it's made me, it's made me smile every time I watch it. Not because I won. But just because I thought you did a good edit. It was a good edit and it was funny. So anyway, that being said, and we have some more family film festivals. I'd love you to see my favorite one of all time is the one that you guys did when we weren't around um, Mm -hmm. where each of you got to pick. And then, yeah, where, but it was not just a music video. It was almost an inception where it's like, is it real or is it not real? And who said it? Was it someone's mind? So mm-hmm. crazy. Anyway. Mm-hmm. All right. Thanks, everybody. Hope you guys have a wonderful day today. Bye.